Stoner has the flag raised and they're off for the first time of asking. The 60 second running of the Badger Beer handicap chase is underway. And the first to show is three under through five with his stable mate Froden up on the outside together over fence number one. Just ridden along on the landing side there was Sam Brown. Racing wide is Blackjack Magic as they head towards the second fence, the middle one of three in the home straight, the second of the 21 in the Badger Beer chase. And over it, the early bat marker is forward plan, one of the Anthony Honeyball quartet. But the Nichols duo are up front together, three under through five on the far side, the maroon sleeves and cap, wider out last year's winner, Frodon, who put in one of his typically excellent leaps there and lands in front, Froden, from three under through five in second. Racing in third is Black Jack Magic. And then comes Certainly Red, who's in company with a big breakaway, who's made up some ground. And then Ashtown Lad, the black colours. Wider out, the black and red is Sam Brown, who's been carried a bit wide there. Back on the inside, going a much shorter route, was Gustavian. Behind those, we have Bally Griffin Cottage. And then behind Bally Griffin Cottage, we have on the outside Sam Brown. Towards the back at the moment is Cortland over the old water jump. And forward plan is also in rear over that one. Cortland is now the bat marker preparing to turn right-handed, head down the back straight. But a, a long way to go still as they head towards the fifth fence. And the big breakaway, the Welsh national runner-up, has now come through the lead to Froden in second place. So over that fence, three under through five in third. Wider out, Blackjack Magic in the blue hooped cap, white and blue on the sleeves. Wider out still in the black is Ashtown Lad. And then comes Certainly Red, who's in the white with the blue stars. The light blue of Gustavians on the inside. They jump that fence. Followed by the white and red Bally Griffin Cottage. Ridden along is Sam Brown. Then comes forward Plan, who's passed one. That one is Cortland, who's the early bat marker in the 60-second Badger Beer chase. Here's the next, the big breakaway. A big jump from him, too. Froden in second. Certainly Red blundered over that fence. Didn't get very high. And the leader is the big breakaway. Froden coming back for more in the centre in the blue and white under Bryony Frost. She's looking to win this race for the fourth time. Wide around is Black Jack Magic, who was well back before the off. Three under through five. Jockey just had a look down there, Harry Cobbs. He's lost a bit of ground, back into about fourth or fifth now. He's in behind Ashtown Lad. And then behind those is Gustavian. He's followed by Certainly Red, who's trying to recover from that mistake. And then Bally Griffin Cottage, one of two in the race for Dan Skelton, is next in the field. Then comes Sam Brown, who's further back with stablemate forward plan. The bat marker is Cortland as they make the run over the fence on the side. The big breakaway in front by a neck to Blackjack Magic in second. Froden is in third place. He's racing ahead of three under through five. Then comes Gustavian creeping a bit closer. Pale blue, Richie McClernand, the noseband on the inside. And they're followed then by Certainly Red. The black of Ashtown Lad is next. Bally Griffin Cottage in the cheek pieces from Forward Plan, who's creeping a bit closer. Sam Brown is towards the back in the black and red. And the back marker is Cortland, the red and yellow colours, as they take the first of three fences in the home straight. The big breakaways in front as they race towards the 11th fence. The big breakaway from Blackjack Magic in second, Froden in third, three under through five in fourth place. And then behind those, Gustavian. Then comes Ashtown Lad, who's in the black colours from Certainly Red. And then forward plan from Bally Griffin Cottage and Sam Brown as they head towards the next fence. It will be the last next time around. And they've all jumped that OK. Cortland has been pulled up, though, before the 11th fence. So Cortland is the only one who's out of the race. He's been pulled up. The others lead them past the stands. The pack stands here at Wing Canton about to turn right-handed for one more circuit in the 60-second running of the Badger Beer Handicap Chase and the big breakaway on the inside for Brendan Powell leads by a half-length to Blackjack Magic in second place. Froden, last year's winner, is in third place. Back on the inner, Gustavian continues to creep a bit closer. Wider out are both, three under through five, and Ashtown Lad in the black. And then comes certainly Red, Sam Brown, Bally Griffin Cottage and forward plan. Sam Brown not really travelling, being driven along and losing ground at the tail of the field, making the run down the back straight for the final time. They're heading towards Fenton. 14 and up front Blackjack Magic has now just got to the front for the first time he's going nicely in the hands of Rex Dingle Blackjack Magic from the big breakaway Froden three under through five coming back into it wide for Harry Cobden the maroon sleeves and cap Paul Nichols looking for a 12th win in this race as they head down towards the next fence on the far side the open ditch Blackjack Magic the big breakaway Froden three under through five Gustavian certainly red Ashtown lad and then comes forward plan Bally Griffin Cottage and Sam Brown He's still battling away, but he is becoming rather remote as they head towards the next fence. Blackjack Magic in the middle. On the inside is the big breakaway. Wider out, three.
three under through five. Then comes Froden, who's going to have to work for this. He's in fourth place, but still there with a chance. Forward plan continues to creep closer. He goes fifth now from Ashtown Lads, certainly red. Gustavian blundered, and then Bally Griffin Cottage and Sam Brown at the back. Continuing the run down the far side and about to turn now, right-handed, they've only got four left to jump. Blackjack Magic in front, Froden goes into second place for Bryony Frost. To the outside is three under through five. Forward plan on the move, he's in fourth. The big breakaway looks to have done his running, he's dropping back now. Then comes Gustavian, who is ahead of Ashtown Ladd as they head towards the fourth from home. The fence on the side, certainly Red is still going back in about fifth place. The leader is travelling well, and that leader is Blackjack Magic around the home turn by a length. Three under through five in the cheek pieces. He's driven along on the right under pressure from Harry Cobden. Froden is in trouble. To the inside is forward plan. And then comes the big breakaway. Certainly Red and Ashtown, Land and Gustavian. Three left to jump in line for home. Blackjack Magic again a good jump. He lands clear by two lengths. Three under through five is the danger though. He's making ground in second. And he's running on strongly for Harry Cobden. Two left to jump. Blackjack Magic from three under through five and they will fight it out. Here's the second last, Blackjack Magic, three under through five, he's getting closer. Then nine legs clear of Froden and then comes Certainly Red on the far side, Blackjack Magic on the near side, three under through five, one left to jump. Blackjack Magic still leads by a length, three under through five is trying hard. Blackjack Magic though has the lead and Blackjack Magic is gonna hold him off and Blackjack Magic is going to win the 60 second running of the Badger Beer Chase. For Rex Diggle and Anthony Honeyball, really well backed. Blackjack Magic jumped well and he wins. To three under through five in second. Froden, last year's winner, a distant third. And then came certainly red in fourth place. Blackjack Magic has won the sixth second running of the Badger Beer Chase. Anthony Honeyball, you must be delighted. What a performance from a horse. Unexposed at this trip, but clearly that's what he wants. going to stay all day. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did win. Um, Aidan Coleman won on him round Exeter in heavy ground. Um, he really had acceleration out that ground. That was my, I couldn't really see the market support being that his best run probably was on heavy. And when Rex won on him at uh, Utoxic was heavy. But that race, I hadn't looked very closely at that race, but when I did, I could, when the sort of the price was coming, I was thinking, God, that race has actually worked out quite well. Yeah. Uh, I suppose unexposed and took our chance. You know, we, we, we gave him a chance first time out. He probably, it's easy to say now, but he probably is quite good fresh. Um, and um, just, I say his jumping was good as a novice he got in a cracking rhythm um, I was a bit worried about that with Frodon being so forward and, and would, would really set, set the race alight but I thought it might suit others coming from further back but um, but he just got in a lovely rhythm and he just jumped from fence to fence I don't think he he made any mistake. Yeah, it seemed pretty seamless, whereas three under three five probably had a, a few issues. But those are solid, good quality horses that he's beating. So we don't know what his the limit of his potential is. No, I, I'd be inclined. Yeah, be, you couldn't really look beyond today now. But I, I mean, to be honest, beyond today, I was thinking on the negative half glass half empty. I was thinking, well, there's, I was saying to the owners, there's loads of nice races from next month. Yeah. Two and a half mile heavy ground, and we're, we're, you know, we'll come on for the run and this, that, and the other. Um, but now you would kind of be keeping him fresh and looking for yeah similar races and um, ideally you'd come back here but I'm not sure there'd be a target like this back here but um, yeah you, you, you just learn from today really and just um, he was very good today sometimes he can lug one way or the other and today he was very straight and um, really enjoyed himself so you know, it's a cracking effort so we just look for another nice pot somewhere off, off a you know nice weight and, and go for that and, and to have a nice young horse who's you know rising and improving clearly you know his experience is you know he's still sort of getting yeah. to grips with it it must be really satisfying exciting for your team yeah and there was it, although there were 11 rather than maybe 17 or 18 which it can be there was still quite a lot of pressure up front yeah. um <laughs> thanks Dave. uh there was a lot of pressure up front and he and he, he really held together well he was obviously like you said over the trip he was just finding the tempo so easy which i think is key to yeah. not blowing up and not you know not not finding it too hard you know he managed to keep filling his lungs up and you could see he was just yeah. toying with the race a bit from the front which is which was lovely for him you never quite know till you try them in these sort of races yeah but for, for you and your team to have to win a race of this nature earlier on in the season yeah. they're all, all going really well but just to have that it gives yeah. you a real good boost for yeah. kicking forward into like the depths of the national hunt season well, we normally have we're normally sort of getting to march april thinking are we going to get a nice pot we've had a nice number of winners but we'd like a higher profile pot and we normally have to wait for entry or punches down sometimes we get a bit of luck there but it's yeah. nice to early season actually get a nice race in the bag and then yeah great for everyone great for the art great for the owners um, I was gonna say they look some really enthusiastic nice bunch yeah. of people yeah no it's very good and we've he, he's gone on uh, they were really supportive about running him as well because it would have been easy I was a bit 
you know, it wasn't 100% that this is the right way to go, but there wasn't a lot for him. So we kind of all just came to the same conclusion, kick on, have a good go and uh, see how we go. So um, it, it sort of became the plan rather than it always was the plan. But um, but yeah, it's good. He's done his work and we've got him ready for the day. So it's great. Yeah. And finally, while I have you, obviously, you're string in good form. It being early part of the season, what are you really looking forward to that you might even even unleashed yet? What, what's the what does the string look like? We've got a lot of young horses. I mean, a lot of young horses. So of the sort of horses you'd know, hear more about, I killed Big King, although he ran the other day and finished third. I'm hopeful as we step him up in trip, he'll gradually get into the, the graded novice chases. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, it wasn't his Gold Cup the other day, sharp track for him. So he'd be one that yeah. I'd be really, really looking forward to. And we've got quite a lot of nice bumper horses coming through. Um, so yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're yeah, looking forward to getting all of those youngsters and seeing what they're made of. Brilliant. Well, today, like, days like today, you can enjoy as well. So well done, Anthony. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. That seemed pretty seamless. How was it for you? Yeah, brilliant. Like, got into great rhythm. Um, was really happy all the way. He kind of filled up with the circuit to go. Mm. Got a little bit worried. Like, that was his first run of the season. Turning in, I just thought he might. He, I felt like I was going to blow up, but when Harry came to me, he stuck his head down and he, he went again. And um, yeah, it's brilliant. He seems like a real Dallas Dayer. Like he really, when he had a bit of company, he really wanted to lengthen again. Yeah, exactly. Like, kind of has had a bit of a reputation, a bit a bit quirky, but. I think that was probably kind of unexposed and you know he was unexposed of offenses and still very baby like but he's yeah. definitely like in the prelims today he was way more relaxed and he's definitely grown up a bit so yeah i took a bit of a hint myself that you'd chosen him one of three anti-honey bull um, yeah. horses today i don't know i don't think there, there was there probably wasn't too much thought that went into that i won on him last time and um yeah, it was just one of them, just lucky on the day. Yeah, a big race to win, brilliant. A thrill must be for you and for the team to get, get that job done. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, Saturday winners and they don't come around too, too often, so it's great. Yeah. Well, he's an exciting horse. Well done. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.